What's up, tubers? Tio here, Simplistic Fishing. You're probably like, man, it's like three videos in a row for Choke Canyon where this guy's had the same hat, same haircut, horrible haircut. Need to get one pretty soon. I haven't even shaved. Looking a little rough, but I'm still breaking down Choke Canyon. And yes, it's true that I actually do all these videos pretty much on the weekends and kind of put them all together. So that's what I'm doing tonight. Just doing another intro. This one is actually for Choke Canyon Reservoir, but we're going out offshore. So if you guys have been paying attention to the channel, we've had two Google Earth videos now to break down Choke Canyon for you. And now we're going to move over and we're going to talk about some offshore hotspots and what you guys need to be looking for out there to catch your new PB. So stick around. I got some good stuff for you. Before we go any further talking about Choke Canyon, I want to really bring this to your attention because some crazy, crazy fluctuation going on with this lake. So right now, as of today, uh, we're in February of 2022 right now, the water level right now is 201.59 and the conservation pool is 220.50. So basically you're 19, you're 18 feet uh, below pool. Um, so that is really not that great, right? 19, almost 19 feet below pool. That's kind of scary. Well, what's crazy is I pulled up the historical data for this lake. And this is for all you nerdy guys like me that just like to see, you know, how the lake has, has done over, over decades time or something like that. But you can see here in 1986, I guess that was when the lake was first made or something like that, because you can see it starts building. It actually crests out here uh, right around the late 1980s. And then look at the water, look at how much this thing actually goes down and fluctuates. There's a huge dip right there, almost 50%. And then it goes back up and then it goes way down here in 1998. And then it kind of suffers for a while. And then all of a sudden in 2002, it's jacked up and it's way above pool. And it stays that way for a while, a little bit of a dip in 2007, and then back up and looks like 2009 or so. It gets way up there. And then somewhere around 2011 or so, it just starts tanking. And it goes way low and it looks like it's start to be on the climb, maybe a little bit back up. So some interesting stuff there. But the most important thing, hopefully, if you didn't hear any of that or didn't care about any of that, the main thing here is that water level. When you go down there, if you're looking at your mapping or something like that, you've got to make the adjustment. You're about 18 and a half feet below where it normally would be. So you got to take that into consideration. Uh, keep yourself out of harm's way. So let's switch over and let's go over to the app, Navionics, and let's see what we found from an offshore standpoint. Okay, so here we are. I'm using the Navionics mobile app. I had a couple of people ask me about what app I use to do this mapping. I use Navionics. It is a super cool uh, application to use from mobile application. I am not sponsored by those guys or anything like that. I pay my membership or yearly fee or whatever it is every year. But man, I really, really like uh, like this application. I love it. The only complaint that I have, which you guys are going to laugh, is that it has a maximum of a thousand waypoints that you can put out there. So you can imagine that with all the lakes we've been breaking down, I've got to manage those waypoints because I've actually ran over a thousand now. So let's go ahead and jump into this thing and let's talk about it. First off, my water level is set to negative 19 feet. So you're going to see on some of these waypoints, uh, as we get up in here, I'll have some that look like they're basically on the bank, like this one right here. It's on the bank. Well, if the water was at full pool, that would have been a great spot to look at. So I went ahead and I kept those points in there because I know that they're eventually going to come into play. But for right now, you'll be able to tell which ones are, are you know able to be fished and the other ones that are just really it's not there. So I'll just kind of skip over those. So let's go ahead and start down here. And we're going to talk the first spot, you know, that I really like. One of my favorite spots, I think, on the entire uh, dam area right here is just right over here, right where it has a really sharp ledge. Now, when the water's up, this looks totally different. You've got a couple of humps and things like that to fish around. But with it down, that hump kind of goes out of play. And now you just really got to work on those ledges. So I would really work on the ledges that are over here. You basically have just a really sharp ledge that's right here it's just an immediate drop when the water's up you've got a really good flat up here that's like six feet stuff like that but with the water down you're you're limiting the areas it's also going to help you find the fish easier because it limits where they can go as well 
So a couple other things that I would I would check out if you were out there just in this area. I didn't want to mark a ton of spots on here for you, so I can't go crazy, but know that there are going to be spots that I'm going to overlook when I'm doing these breakdowns. My goal here, hopefully, is to kind of to show you how I break a leg down and how I approach fishing. Uh, again, I'm not a pro, so I'm not claiming that or anything like that. I've just done a lot of fishing and I've had a lot of success fishing, so I'm super excited to, to share my successes with you guys. So if we're looking out here, I would, you know, after I, after I hit those two spots, I would come out here and look at the tips of these right here on the tips, especially that one. That one's got a road bed. That one's got a really good drop to 20 feet. This one's got a road bed as well. Take a look at those spots. We didn't mark them all for you, but I would definitely look right in that spot if I were you. Now, coming up here, a couple spots we did mark for you guys. There, is, again, is a spot right here. Now, if the water was up, that would come in play. So if the water ever does go back up, I'm going to come back to Choke Canyon. We're going to go back over the offshore stuff. But for right now, I don't even want to waste your time because it could be five or six years before the water ever gets up to where we can use that waypoint. So let's just focus on the ones that we can use. So again, right here, this is a really good little point that comes out. It's touching out towards the main lake. It's got a nice shallow flat on top of it. You probably got probably got some flooded hydrilla or something like that in there. I would definitely check right in that area. Now, as we move back in here, a couple spots that aren't in play anymore. You do have the back of this island still. So you could check out the back of the island right there where that fish is. It says fishing or diving hotspot. This looks so much different when the water is up. You've got a decent little break going on here. So it could still be there. So definitely check out the back side of that island. Check out the uh, the saddle for sure. You're going to find a lot of fish right around that area. That's one of the deeper spots right there between the two. So definitely look there in the saddle. Check out the back side of this thing as well. And notice if we're looking here at this island that's out here, um, you've got some flooded timber as well. So there's flooded timber all around this area. So those are always really good spots to find fish. If you can find the, uh, the flooded timber fishing around those, especially right now, you know, February timeframe, if you can catch them before they start moving further back in those bays, they'll set up on those trees and you can actually catch them pretty good. So moving down in here, we're going to keep coming back again. It's just some marks that are over here. And I was hoping that this would still be in play. Uh, because when the water is up, this looks like an awesome place to fish. But there's a pond dam back here. We've got it marked for you. There should be a pretty steep drop right there, you know, right where that mark is. There should be a pretty steep drop where that old pond dam is. And there's also a little creek that comes through there somewhere. So at some point in that little curve should be a really good spot just right in that area. Maybe not where my mark is because my mark's on the back side of that pond dam. But fish the front side of the pond dam right now since the water's down. Okay, let's keep going out. Again, we've got some, some other areas there. We've got this pond, this uh, this island that actually comes up now, which was just a, a hump. But I really like a couple different spots here. One would be fishing the roadbed right, just right in between here. And then also fishing the roadbed out here. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily, obviously not going to fish the land, but, but focus on that area around there because it, when the water was up, that would have been a really good spot to be able to be fishing around. So as we come over here, we've got some flooded timber that's over here as well. So check out that little point there and check out the flooded timber that's in there as well. My guess is that's you're probably going to see the timber now um, and hopefully it's still there. Uh, if it is, you've got some timber and you've also got some looks like hydrilla and stuff like that. So that could be a nice little secondary point to take a look at. Coming out here, you've got a nice little point too that comes out. Has some vegetation around it as well, so definitely look right in here. Try to find the breaks. Really try to focus on the edge of that vegetation. If you can find the edge, you're golden. And that was one thing I probably should have brought up when we were talking about that roadbed that was down here. If there's vegetation, the cool thing about the vegetation and the hydrilla is it won't grow on the roadbed. So that what that does basically is it creates a direct line for you to be able to fish on. So and it creates a really, really good edge for those fish to ambush the bait fish and stuff like that on. So if you can find the roadbeds and then you find hydrilla combined with the roadbed, you know you're going to find a pretty good weed line somewhere that you can fish around. All right, so I'm going to keep coming back here. I don't think we had anything marked back there. We did have that one spot, but that's off. That's on land now. We've also got this nice little point here that was really, really good originally hopefully it would still be a decent point for you but definitely check that out as well if not if that's just not happening there make sure you pull off and you take a look 
at this road bed. Again, I know I keep hounded on the road beds, but road beds are, are really fun to fish around and, and you know you can definitely have a lot of success there. We've got some flooded timber back in here. We've also got this little pond back here that we marked for you guys. I, I didn't look like you can get to it anymore. You could try to get back there and see, you know, normally that's 22 feet at pool, but right now that thing's maybe a foot, two foot. It's not very much at all. All right, so we're gonna keep moving over here. We're gonna move on up. Another decent little point, just main lake point to check out. Nothing crazy there, or I guess main channel. I actually, that's I'm not a main channel. I'm totally off here. We're not in the main lake, little secondary point. Is check it out. Not nothing too special about that one, other than the fact you got a creek bed that's pretty close to it. So check it out. See if there's anything there. Let's skip that one because that's too shallow now. You got a submerged culvert that's over here. That might only be in like four or five foot of water. Um, and if you could get some spring runoff in for some of these from some of these creek beds and come in right through there, and they, they have some place to set up on, that could be a pretty good looking spot. Uh, to fish come springtime or really any time once it starts raining again. So uh, definitely look in there. You've got some submerged culverts back here. Again, another spot back there we can't even talk about. Real bummer. Road bed right here. So check out the road bed. The spot I had, not going to be a good spot anymore, but you could come out and check out this road bed and see what's around this pond. Maybe, maybe there's some vegetation in this area and that pond opens up and is a little bit deeper hole or something like that. So uh, definitely look at that as well. Moving down, we got another point. Again, looked a lot better when the water was up, but it's still a point. So, you know, it's hard to pass up pretty much any points. You got to check them all. So that would be one you want to check. And back in here, you got some flooded timber. Hopefully it's still flooded. Uh, you know, you still got some pretty decent depth. So look in here, look around these edges, look really where those drops are right in there. You may be able to find some stuff located in here. You actually have, for a change, a little bit deeper water right in that spot. Again, a lot of stuff up on shore. This would be like a really cool flat to fish if it was under the water. Or really what we got to do now is just focus on the edges of it. So uh, you've got some edges out here. You've got some flooded timber that you can see where that little dotted line is. That's all flooded timber. Um, so what you'd want to do is get on the edge of that flooded timber. See if, if it has a really defined edge. That's awesome. And fish around that. So like right here, that's actually a really good spot so i'm going to go ahead and just mark that thing for us while we're sitting here because that's how much i like it so we're going to mark that spot with the water down that looks really good and then we're going to keep going up obviously this you know this is too deep for me i don't like fishing that deep but right here man it goes too deep right it goes deeper than i want to go but it comes up really perfectly right where i would like to fish so i would i would do that one as well uh, as you're checking it out again if the water's up that's really not going to, it's, it's going to be way too deep to even mess with, but right now that's pretty good. So let's mark that one too. Have that out for you guys. All right. So let's keep moving up some stuff on land now. So that's no good. That's where that flooded timber was more stuff that was on land. We had some flooded timber and some secondary points back in here. Yeah. We can't even use that one anymore. We got a lot up in here that we can't use. You can see where the water is just, not in play anymore and once it does that again it limits the spots right so it limits me to be able to find areas to be able to fish but it also limits the fish to where they can go as well so it should make it a little bit easier for you now right here if we're looking we got a creek bed that runs right through here right we've got a submerged culvert so we know that there's some kind of creek bed going on right here and we've got a little point here too so look at this point it comes up to about three foot so pretty shallow pretty good drops that come off of it and it's fairly close to that creek bed too so that makes it a lot higher percentage area to uh, to go check out coming over here we just got what used to be a uh, a hump i don't know if that would be really worth fishing around now uh, but it used to be an underwater hump when the water was up so you can check that out you've also got these road beds again check out these road beds especially when they get close to that uh vegetation and stuff like that those are money spots to take a look at Moving down here again, this used to be an underwater hump, so I'm not sure how good it would be now, but if I, was, if I were to fish around it, I'd probably fish this side where it was closer to that creek bed, and then also this side where it's closer to the creek bed too. Looks like you have some flooded timber in here, so you could still have some potential back in there, uh, even with it being down. Stuff's too shallow here. You had some flooded timber around some good points, not in play anymore. You do have this though. You got a little three road beds, so you go, one here, one here, and one here, and you got a little junction going on right in this area. 
And it's really not that deep. It's only 14, 15 foot deep right now. Plus you got that submerged culvert. I would say looking at here is definitely has a, it has some pretty strong potential to be able to find some stuff right in that area. I like how it sets up. Now, as we move back in here, we lost all kinds of waypoints to be able to show you because it's just not deep enough anymore. But if I am going in here and I'm looking at it from this standpoint of the water being really down, down low, I'm going to really focus on that creek channel that we marked for you guys. Now, I'm not going to mark it here with icons because we have that marked with the track on the cards. You can just follow that creek channel. But if I'm if I'm fishing back there, especially that water being so low, I'm going to go and try to find where that creek channel is. And then I'm really going to look and see if I can find any turns that it might have. And if it has a really sharp turn where it does anything different, then that's where I'm going to really hone in and focus a lot on. So looking at this, if I'm just staring at this right now with the water being down, this spot right in here, I would I would look at that spot. That would definitely be a spot that I would say, hey, we've got to go. And we've got to scan around that area and see if we can find anything there. And then also wherever that creek bed, it looks like the two of them beat somewhere in here. That area in there, which I know is just right really close to what we were just talking about, but that area in there is another spot where I would definitely want to go look. All right, let's keep moving down. Unfortunately, again, we're losing some spots back there. We have a pretty decent point here, and it's close to this creek channel, really close to the creek channel. So check a look at that one. I thought I missed one there, and then we're going to keep going down. You got some interesting stuff out here that says there's some old old ponds and so there's seaweed and stuff out here or something i don't know it's not seaweed but uh some kind of an old creek bed or something like that so you could check that out possibly i don't know if it's worth checking out i didn't mark it it's probably something that i would just overlook 99 percent of the time it's probably one of the best spots on the lake you never know now again when we're coming out here you got to really pay attention to uh the creek channels because the creek channels are going to be huge up here uh, we're really getting into the juice when we get up in here into this area, uh, at least what I consider the juice, because I love fishing creek channels, especially when everything gets drawn back to it, because it, it pretty much just puts the fish in this predictable place um, that makes it so much easier. And then when it floods and it's going to be totally chaos because they can go all over the place. But right now they're kind of pinned. And so what you're going to do is you're going to come up here and you're going to look at those areas where those big turns are. So first off, before, I guess, before I go do all that, I think we already went there. We talked about the, let's talk about the edge of this island. And really guys, right now, that doesn't even come into play either. So let's just keep moving down and let's talk about this, this whole area right in here. Okay. So these are predictable areas that they're going to be, if they're not up here off the edges of these points, obviously when the water's up, these are great little points to fish off of. Now with the water down, they don't look as good but they're really close to the creek channel or the main river channel that's here. So right in here, you know, right there, I don't know what that is, but that looks like a really good spot to be fishing. You've also got a nice little hump right there too. And then anywhere it makes a big turn right here, makes a really big turn. You've also got a pond dam back here too. You could, you could search around. And then as we get further back, we're really going to focus on the creek channel. Here's a really good creek channel bend. Right here, you've got the creek channel where it slams up against the bank line right there. So a creek channel swing, so it's swinging up and hitting the bank. So real good spots right in there. Both of those are marked. And then you just kind of fall off another, you got a real good bend out here too. And then we're just gonna kind of chill out, you know, cause now we're getting into some shallower water and we're just looking to see if there's anything else out here. There's a nice little road bed up here you can check out. I think these are like solar panels or something. I don't know what it said, some kind of, usg solar panel thing i don't know what it was but it looks like these are just marked as tanks so i don't know what that means but the roadbed is what i'd probably focus on the most now as we move a little bit further up here look at this swing right here and you know it looks just really really good real good bend there real good drops off that's an area that i'm going to put a lot of attention to especially right now um, so let's go ahead and mark that one too Again, I feel bad for adding more, but I think you guys will appreciate it, hopefully. Now, down here, we've also got another good creek channel swing. So right in here, or not bend, uh, bend not a swing. So definitely right in there. Take a look at that and just follow these. Again, we've got those tracks that are back there. So follow those tracks. And anytime you see that thing doing anything funky, like right here, 
or that other one that we talked about, or let's follow it down right there. There's another good hot spot. You know, anytime it gets all squirrely like this, right in here where it touches, those are good spots. So take a look at those spots and see what you think. And then let's go ahead and keep going down here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out real quick. We're going to go up here. We're going to finish the backside of this thing. And then what we'll do on the next video is we'll come out here, we'll start here, and we'll work our way south. So let's go ahead and just keep going back around that bend where we were talking about earlier. This is where the bend comes up, hits it right in that area. That looks good. Over here, you kind of got the same thing. You got some flooded timber and a real sharp turn kind of blown out right there. I like that spot. Again, here you're touching, you know, that creek channel swing is coming down and it's really touching the edge of that point. That's cool. Here you've got a hump that it's swinging around. So you got a nice little bend here with the inside of that bend being that that uh, that hump that's there so that's pretty cool another good little bin that's out right over here and you got some shallow stuff over here that you could check out i don't know if i would really count that as being a uh, you know a fishing hotspot but maybe some stuff around it maybe just see if there's any cover or stuff around it that you could fish around look at that i mean that that's juicy right there that just stuff that kind of stuff gets me excited when i can be closer to the bank and still be fishing that river channel i don't know why but i just feel like my percentages just go go way up um we're gonna go over here got a nice another bin and then you know we're just gonna keep going back we're really just looking at that kind of stuff this is where uh right here i like this flat comes off really shallow right now three feet and then it drops pretty quickly to about 13 foot so you've got a pretty decent little ledge going on out here still even with the water being down right here looks really awesome look where that creek channel bends right there really hard and then it comes up and it slams up against this little flat that's over here so right there where I put that marker, this little island has potential, got some pretty good breaks around it. It's also got a creek channel on the other side of it you could check out. This spot looks like it's getting a little bit too, cha too shallow. That used to be a pond dam. Um, and then over here, apparently Jeffrey likes that area, so Jeffrey's corner. Now again, here we go up here, big old bend, right? So anywhere around that bend is going to be a really good area to take a look at. Right in here, you've got some flooded timber going on, plus you have a road bed. And if you look right here, there's some pretty sharp drop there for that creek channel. So I really like that, or river channel, creek channel, whatever this is. And we're going to keep moving up. And again, you just got another one of those little turns. So that's really what we were marking here. Again, another swing. This used to be a really good looking point. It probably still pretty good because you've got that creek channel coming over there. And you've got another little swing here that looks good right where we marked that. And then we pretty much run out of points because it gets way too shallow. Getting back up in here, I believe it's going to be, yeah, all this stuff is pretty much on the land. So we're going to skip that whole top part because, unfortunately, not available anymore. But if it does become available, I got you guys covered. Um, and I'm really looking forward, hopefully, to this lake coming back up. I hate to see a lake get down this low. So we talked about all that stuff in the river right there. One a couple of things we didn't talk about is coming down here in these arms uh, right here. Really like this. Looks like it's just a boat ramp, which I probably already have marked for you guys, but look how sharp drop that is. It looks really good. A lot of this stuff is all on land now because it's too shallow. So we we had one spot there would be the boat ramp. I don't think you guys are gonna go all the way back there for that one spot. So if you're back there, let's go back and look at this again. Uh, man, I just don't know. I'd say follow that creek channel, maybe right in here, just right in that area, maybe. I just don't see anything back there that gets me excited until I get out here. And then I'm like, yeah, yeah, this is a perfect spot. Look at this spot, how it swings down, hits the edge of that point. We already talked about those earlier. Look, and it's got my attention again. I just can't get away from that spot for some reason. So I'll guarantee you that if I go out to this lake, uh, you guys know where I'm going to be headed for sure. Okay, so I'm going to keep going down. We talked about the edges of those points, and then that gets us back down right here to marker one or 574. So I'm gonna go ahead and end on that marker. Actually, I'm not, I'm gonna keep going guys because I'm just now realizing that we don't really have too much to cover here. So let's go ahead and swing around. Let's just, let's finish out Choke Canyon. Why not, man? So coming over here, uh, nice little turn in right here. Got some vegetation over there, nice little break. Back in here, you still got some opportunities back in here, although very, very shallow. I don't know if that would be worth going back in there for. All this vegetation, though, is probably going to be tons of fun to fish. And I understand there's a ton of hydrilla in there, too, so that makes it even more fun. You got a submerged culvert back here, too, you can check out. Uh, still 
No, not much going on there. Because that used to be really good. It used to be a real good ledge right there. So you can still check it out. Look right here. Now this, immediately again, boom, you got my attention. The creek channel comes down, has a really good turn right in there. I really like that spot right in there. I really like how it sets up. And notice how this huge flat, we used to have all kinds of cool stuff to fish around. Now we got nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. It's all just changed. So over here, a little bit edge of that flat, we're actually getting in some water now, like five, at least five foot. You do have a little bit of a break going on right in here. So you can check out right in here, maybe see if they're coming up there and feeding and then dropping back off in there. You just, you never know what you're going to find there. And as we get back in here, guys, it's just too shallow right now. Just nothing that we can be fishing back in there. Again, pretty restricted. You got a little island that's back in here, right here, that's got some vegetation around it and things like that. But again, what used to be a hump is now just a, an island that's that's up above the water. And then we get back in here. We got a pond that may still be in play. You might not that one. I don't think that one's in play anymore. But maybe this one. Maybe. I mean, it says six, seven foot, so it's possible you still got a pond in back there. Not sure if you can go back there and fish them. But what I see now that I didn't see before, two different spots here that catch my attention. One is going to be right here at the edge of that point. Let's go ahead and mark that one. And the other one is going to be right here. I like that one too, so I'm going to go ahead and mark that one as well. So before, when, when I did the marks, of course, I did the marks with them up. Uh, with the water up and then i wanted to have you know hopefully still be able to find some stuff with the water down i didn't notice this when i came back around with the water down so i missed those two spots but those look like now they're in play and if you look they're pretty skinny little points so they're going to create some pretty good spots for them to set up on ambush fish stuff like that those two spots look pretty decent definitely go check a look at it all right and then we swing back around now we're down here getting close down here by the dam uh, where we actually started. So we finished, unbelievable. We finished Choke Canyon all in one video. Clearly could not have done that if the lake would have been at full pool. So as I promised you guys in the video, if this lake starts to come up, I'm going to come back, circle back, and talk to you guys about those other waypoints so you'll understand why I put those out there for you. Hey, again, if you haven't gone out, check out our site. Please do so, simplisticfishing.com. You can get all these waypoints plus the Google Earth waypoints plus all the tracks and all the other stuff that we can find on these lakes. You combine it all together, put it on a card for you, let you import that into your fish finder. It's pretty cool stuff. So until next time, guys, I hope you catch your PB. Take care.